Hey, welcome back to the K9P4 training portal for the QuickScan Mini. After viewing this video and observing the step-by-step -step processes, you'll be able to run a test from start to finish on your QuickScan Mini. So the first step immediately after drawing the blood from the animal is to transfer the blood into either your microtube or your two milliliter micro centrifuge tube. From here on, we're gonna allow 10 minutes for the clotting time. You can use your timers provided. Just change the timing to 10 minutes and hit start and allow it that 10 minutes of clot time. We're just gonna allow it to sit in the tube. Don't allow it to clot within the blood needle itself as that can lead to hemolysis. So step one, allow the blood to clot, give it 10 minutes. So the next step after the 10 minute clot time is just to transfer your tubes into your centrifuge, making sure that your centrifuge is balanced and restarting the timer to allow it to spin for another 10 minutes. The battery powered centrifuge shown here is not available in the regular bundle, but it's included in the travel bundle. It's a really great option for taking your testing on the go. As you can see, it is running off of battery power here. It operates either off of battery or from power from the wall, and it's our personal favorite here at K9P4.com. It actually has a built-in timer and a slightly higher spin speed, allowing it to separate in only six minutes. So from the time you close the lid, it will open back up after six, and you'll be ready to test. For most other standard centrifuges, including micro centrifuges, please allow 10 minutes of spin time typically set at 3,000 to 3,500 RPM. Get more information in the blood processing video or blood processing and handling document available on the training portal. Now we remove our blood tube and we're going to check our serum. So the serum has risen to the top. We want to inspect to make sure that it's not lipemic or cloudy or hemolyzed and very red. This is a perfect straw colored specimen it's clear, transparent, and is not gel-like in consistency. This is perfect for our test. Be aware that this step in processing the blood is highly important to the accuracy of your testing. So if you do come across any of those issues, please give us a call here and we'll assist you in clearing that matter or review the blood processing training information on the portal here. And now we move into the sixth step. So the sixth step will simply be to set your pipette, which is included in both versions of the bundle, to 80 microliters. You're going to read that from the top down as 0, 8, 0, and there'll be a line 0. Then after that, we need to place a new clean pipette tip on from a vertical approach, not applying too much pressure, but enough to have the tip be on snug. So now that we're all set up, the instrument is powered on, we need to get our reagent test kit. The first step, if you haven't already done it, is calibrating via the ID chip into the machine. However, it's very simple. We're just going to open our kit, get our calibration chip out, sort of resembles a USB. Insert it into the front left port here. You're going to hear a beep. That concludes that the calibration has imported and you're ready to continue your testing. If you've already done this step, you won't need to repeat it. Once it's in the machine, it will stay in there. The next step we will want to proceed with is getting one test strip. Please leave it sealed up until the time that you're ready to test with it. We will then unseal the test. Use the tray included in your bundle to place it on a flat, stable, and non-vibrating surface. And from here, we will be pipetting 80 microliters of the serum into the sample well, placing it into the machine, and clicking standard test. So at this point, we need to extract 80 microliters of our serum using the pipette set to 80 microliters with a new tip placed firmly on the end. Take a look at the How to Pipette Like a Pro video to give you every detail that you need to use this correctly and get accurate results. We need to be at the first position or first stop prior to pipetting up the serum. Then we'll go in and submerge it slightly into the serum. Careful not to agitate the red blood cells. And let the lever lift up. Just verify when you're pulling up your serum that you do not have any air bubbles pulled. Do a volume check to be sure that you have that 80 microliters of sample required. 
Ab above or below that amount is going to affect your test result and change its accuracy. We want to be sure that this volume is set exactly to 80 microliters and that we withdraw exactly 80 microliters of serum. So next, I'm going to slowly push it through the sample well here. It will pool a little bit on top. Then we insert it into the test receptacle of the machine, pushing all the way through. It's going to go about three quarters of the way in. Past this point, don't push any further. You'll need to give it a little bit of force, but not too much. We then click standard test. And on the bottom left corner, click new test. The countdown will begin from 15 minutes. And at that point, the machine will read your result. Print your result if auto print is turned on and complete the test. So once you begin or click the, your new test button, be sure not to hit the back or new test again or any of the menu icons. Just let it go through its countdown. Otherwise you risk canceling the test and having to start over. All right, so now that the test result has completed after the 15 minutes, you'll see the result both on screen and on the printout. You can rip off and save that printout for your records, it'll also be saved in the history of the machine. Here we have a value of 0.31 nanograms per milliliter. The next thing we're going to want to do is compare that to our timing chart for the quick scan mini only. See where that number lines it up and interpret from there. Um, that number is actually going to be below LH surge, so in the an estrus or basically out of heat cycle, it's only a trace amount. Um, so Based on this number, there's also be a test frequency recommendation on the chart. And then on the bottom of the insert sheet, we also have the, just a display of the date and time that the test was taken, the random sample ID number generated, and the test item PROG, which is, stands for the progesterone test. So that was easy, wasn't it? Thanks for watching. Please stick around for our next video on how to interpret your test results.